So we don't have that information because the world editor has already loaded it in and discarded of that information. So this is our first problem. We need to store this reference so that we can use it in the Ionesis framework. So because of that, we actually can't use the static reference because this class, game.static, um, it loads in uh, these game static. It loads in on the create function, it takes the object param and and uses it for the creation, but doesn't save a reference to it, so we've lost it. Um, what we can really do very easily though is create a wrapper class around this that just stores one additional piece of information, which is this object params. Uh, and it's actually very straightforward to do, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, and you can see how easy it is. So let's go down to our source code area and add a new code. It's called load static. Um, so in this class, uh, it's called cus static. Uh, and all we're going to do is take the base of the game dot statics uh, class. Uh, because that was pretty much everything we needed. It was just missing one small piece of data, uh, and that was the um, game dot uh, object params. Yeah. So if you look at the uh, game dot static we saw earlier, uh, it took in the object params and then consumed them. We actually just want to store that reference. So uh, we're going to store a pointer to the game param object. Now uh, we need to override the create function that the game.static does, taking the same parameter, game.params, calling it a pointer to object, in the exact same way it does. And the only thing different we're going to do is first let it do its own thing, so super.create. So let it create its object, and then this dot object equals object. So we're calling that create function from the game class, uh, and we're going to then store the object reference. Simple as that. Um, one other thing we're going to want to do is the object params class uh, is great, but what we needed again was the uh, object params pointer. We don't want the actual params themselves because uh, we're going we're passing this over the network. So we want a pointer to that, which is actually just the UID. So what I want to do in my load static class is create one extra class uh, in terms of constant UID uh, and call it get UID, UID, uh, get ID. And all we're going to do is um, make sure the object exists first, oh, it's safe to do that, uh, then return object.base, uh, and object.base returns a pointer to the uh, the params pointer, which is exactly what we want, you can see it returns constant object pointer, um, and actually we want the ID of that. Otherwise, uh, return UID0, which is just a safe way to Handle the function, uh, and actually I'll just paste in a constructor and destructor as well, uh, just to delete that reference if we don't need it. So that should be all we need for that. So all we do is create a simple object class uh, called custom static, which will inherit game dot static. Actually, I'll do double for that, um, and it will call its create routine first, and then it will store that object uh, params pointer and then pass it back when we want it. Uh, that's where we want to start. So now if we hop back here, we actually don't want to create the statics anymore. We actually want to use our custom static class instead of game.static. So now we have a collection of custom statics, which is very similar to game.static. Okay, so now we can build our function call to the setObjects function. So it first wants the world, uh, which we can pass it to the pointer to the world, which we have here, this one. 
So pointer to world, first one. Uh, position. So we don't have the position exactly, um, and it's a vector integer. So we need to derive that. So let's do that first. So vector i. Um, oops. I'll try to pick that. Oh, it's coming. It's back i. That's right. Uh, lo let's call it local. And uh, so we want our item, uh, and we want to iterate through. So items, right? Uh, I, because the repeat all gives our reference at I, and we want the position. Uh, and we start with the x axis, right? Yeah, x y z. So dot x, and then same thing again. Position y, and then position z. Oops. Uh, that should do it. So now we have a vector integer like it wants, so it's called local, right? And the last, we want angle, which will just actually be the, um, the trees.matrix. And then I can just do the dot angle, I think, right? Yeah. So that will pull the uh, current translation ang uh, angle of the matrix. And the last thing it wants is that objects pointer. So I want to do my um, items i, which will do my custom static, and I should have my get uid function. So that will return a pointer to my uid that I want, and that should be it. So what this should do now is iterate through the two stairs that I've placed in the world. I put those two staircases in there. Uh, and when the area, it finds the area that the stairs are in, it should find, create a vector for the location, and then it should call the set objects function to put them in and propagate them to all the clients. So let's go ahead and see if that worked. So press play. Okay. error. Oh, it added a second parenthesis there. Let's try it again. Okay, server is up. It's a good start. Open up our client. All right, where there are the stairs right there. You can see they're they're there. Uh, and they're collidable, so they're, they're stairs. I can probably remove them if I wanted to. Uh, yep, so that seems to work perfectly fine. Uh, let's see what else we can do with the same architecture we already have. So I'm just going to close this down. Uh, now, so all we did is basically loaded any static class and dropped it into the world. But the way it works, I mentioned before from the, uh, objects uh, class is it just stores all the pointer UIDs here so technically anything that's of type static should work exactly the same way with absolutely no change so let's go ahead and test that theory um, I'm going to use the basic essential uh, windmill object which you can get from the website so just basic uh, windmill uh, nothing fancy it's already of type static um, make sure it doesn't say terrain, it should say object static type. So with this, if I open up my world, I should be able to drop a windmill basically wherever I want. And there it is. Uh, and I can rotate it if I want to, uh, to face me. So that should technically work. Let's just add two to be fun. Why not? Uh, so now we have our windmills. I shouldn't, let me close by my, my server. Uh, I shouldn't have to do anything else, it should just work. So let's compile our server again. Run it again. And then run the client. And there you can see our windmills rotated and uh, in our world. Uh, should be collidable, yep. 
can see their bounding boxes. So uh, that worked. You could drop any static object you want into this world, and now it will work. So if you have any static trees or other kinds of objects, uh, boulders, rocks, those will all work just fine with that simple change we made. Um, but that's the basic object type. I mentioned earlier that trees are ground object types. So let's go ahead and try to load those in as well with a, one additional piece of code we need to add to the, to the system. Close these down again. So I mentioned we want to go and add some trees. So let's do that first. Uh, if you go to the tree object here, we want to add these to the world. So let's go into our world and paint some trees in. Drag the trees onto the handy painter. Uh, and I can just paint them in there. Just a few. Huh, that should be enough trees. Um, great, now let's go into the code and make those work. So I'm going to follow the exact same steps. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a piece of memory location for it. So game to make this active. Game object memex. Uh, same exact class, custom static. Uh, I trees. So now that I have my memory location. I'm going to set the type every time we get to do I trees and object tree. And if you go to back to the world, you'll notice the tree object. Is of type tree. So that's why you have to put the tree object in there. So object tree in. Uh, and now we can do almost the exact same thing we did here with only a few small changes. We copy that, and all I want to do is replace the reference to items with our i trees reference. So if I put there, there, now the one other change is because I mentioned there's two branching functions set object and set ground object. Call the set ground object, which takes the exact same parameters in. Uh, does a few extra steps on its own side, initializing, initializing the trees so they grow. But other than that, it's exactly the same. Uh, that should be all I have to do to get this to run. So let's go ahead and compile. Okay, let's turn this up. Now we should see, I think I see them over there, little baby trees. Yep, there they are. And if we watch for just a second, we should see it. There you can see some growing. Uh, they're all scheduled objects, so every 15 seconds it checks to see if they need to grow uh, randomly. So they are. Uh, and they're still interactable. I can still remove them if I want to, just like any other object. Uh, and that's how you can add trees. Grass would be the exact same process. Uh, I would assume I haven't gotten there yet, but that's how you can add or remove items into the essential worlds um, through the editor. So I hope you learned something. Uh, please feel free to contact me on the essential forums. Uh, the link is in the description. My name there is Osmodian, and uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate it.